Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how I sharpen my Masamoto Petty, or any, any Petty for that matter. And I've got here my Arashiyama 1000. Now this stone here has been soaking for two weeks, and I am trying to see how the stone feels, uh, to see, you know, really to see if this stone really can be perma-soaked. I have had a few subscribers tell me that they have perma-soaked this stone and have had a lot of success with it. So I figured I'd give it a try, why not? And this is my uh, Masamoto here. And this stone, I mean this stone, this knife is actually not very, well, out of the box, they're okay. They're not super sharp. And I typically like to sharpen my knife uh, out of the box anyways, but I've been using this for a couple of weeks now. A great little knife. But uh, for those who are new to sharpening, I really recommend you getting a petty to learn on, uh, mainly because the knife uh, is actually well, it's so short, it actually sits on you know, the entire length of the knife, it sits on the stone. So it makes your sharpening process really easy. It helps you develop a kind of a proper uh, sense of how to find your angle and really just how to control the knife uh, with your wrist. And so yeah, I recommend you guys picking up just a cheap little petty if you guys are new to sharpening. Um, you can, I mean, obviously you can use your Kyoto or your chef knife, your Sentoku, whatever you guys want to use. But in terms of uh, really picking up the skills quickly, I think a petty will definitely help you go a long way. All right, so I'm just gonna throw a little bit of water on my stone. And uh, so, as you guys know, in the past video, the Gyoto video, um, how I, sh you know, you find the the proper grip uh, with the petty, it's obviously a little shorter and it's a little more difficult to bring your middle finger all the way up. So what you want to do, um, you actually can bring your middle finger a little, even a little higher. Um, and bring because if you bring your middle finger to this point uh, your thumb might be too far back behind the the choil here so what you want to do is you maybe even want to bring your middle finger a little higher on the knife or on the tang and your thumb will come to the edge bottom edge of the knife and your index finger will go right here okay so this gives me a pretty good uh, holding angle so again, it's not quite as low as it was in the sharpening of the chef knife. It's a little higher of a grip. And to find your angle, as we have said, so what you can do is you want to just, you want to run the knife just a few times, trying different angles, trying a steeper angle, trying a lower angle, okay? And the way, what I do is the, I bring it to a really a 25 degree, 30 degree angle, okay, and I run the knife. And I bring the edge lower, okay, so I lower the edge, okay, I bring the spine of the knife closer to the whetstone. And as soon as the knife slips, okay, so right here for me, I stop and I bring the spine away from the stone. Okay, so that gives me my proper sharpening angle. I ignore numbers, uh, you'll, you'll see and hear a lot of people tell you that you need to sharpen at a 12 degree, 15 degree angle, okay, I ignore all of that because I simply want to find the angle that the knife has and that makes it easiest to sharpen and it keeps, uh, keeps the profile of the knife very consistent, okay? So for me, that's how I find my angle. If you guys want to find it any other way, we want to measure your angle, that's perfectly fine, okay? So let me just wet the stone again. Okay, so again, I start my, I start my sharpening with the front tip of the knife and work my way to the back tip, uh, typically on a Gyoto, okay? On a Petty, I still do that, but obviously I don't move the knife off the stone. What I do is I start with the knife here, okay, with the tip here, and I just start, okay? Okay, I'm not moving this knife around the stone a whole lot. Okay, so a quick note, as you guys see, I'm not walking my fingers up and down the knife because obviously it's so short. And uh, as long as you have your weight of your fingers distributed across the front and middle of the stone, I mean middle of the knife, you don't have to move your hands uh, up and down the knife, okay? Also, what you wanna keep in mind is because this knife has a rounded belly, you know, most knives do, you, you Try not to go straight up and down the stone when you're sharpening the front tip of the knife, okay? By doing that, you can create a situation where you flatten the belly and it will take away the rocking ability of the knife. 
So what I like to do is, if you guys watch my right hand here, I'll try to show you guys in slow motion, is you see how my right hand actually slides away from the stone? Okay, so that creates a slight gentle rocking motion for the front half or the front quarter of the knife. And so by doing that, I keep the roundness of the belly and that uh, prevents the knife from getting too flat up here. Okay, so that's something that I like to stress when I'm sharpening knives that have a more pronounced or round belly. But when I'm doing it fast, you guys can't really see it too much, but if you can't pay you know, close attention, you'll see my right hand will slide out slightly when I'm doing the tip. Okay, then when I come towards the center of the knife and the bottom, bottom tip, I'm doing more or less a straight motion. Okay, so what I also like to do is, you guys like you guys know that I like to move my knife around the edges of the stone, which oftentimes get neglected. Now on a petty, it's a little more difficult to do that because uh, sometimes you just want to get the knife done uh, since the whole entire blade is sitting on the stone. But if you have time, just do a few strokes you know, around the, the outer edge of the, of the stone and that just, just a few strokes, that's all you need and then you go back to the center and the bottom tip of your knife. Okay, so that's pass number two. And uh, I'm, the knife is pretty much sharp and or the burr has developed pretty nicely. Uh, this is the first time I've actually sharpened with a perma-soaked Arashiyama and I have to say it feels really, really good. Uh, I'll do a kind of a conclusion video or a final remarks video on this on this stone perma soaked. Okay. Alright, so now I'm gonna re wet my stone. I'm gonna go to the other side. It's developed a very nice little burr, very minor burr. And so on the left side of the knife, again, I can't. It's you know to sharpen the the front tip. I can't bend my wrist because it just didn't, my wrist don't bend that way. You can switch hands if you like, but for those who cannot switch hands, what you want to do is you want to change the pitch, uh, the angle of your sharpening. Okay. So let's say if I'm sharpening at a roughly a 45 degree angle uh, around here, around the tip, I may want to bring it to maybe a 50 degree angle and sharpen it that way. Okay, so I discover the proper sharpening angle the same way. I slide my knife at a tilt and I lower the spine until I feel it slip right there. Then I bring it slightly back. I bring the angle slightly in, ever so slightly in, and I start my sharpening. Okay, now as I come towards the center and the end of the knife, I will bring my wrist out so that I can get the bottom bottom edge of the knife down here. And we do that so that you don't have the ta your tang get in the way on the bottom side. Because if you were not to not turn the knife, you'll see the tang actually will get in the way of your sharpening and it'll get scratched up, which it won't hurt the knife. It just We'll scratch it up, and uh, you don't want you don't necessarily want that. Okay, so this stone is sharpening really nicely. There is really no load up on this stone, and it has a much snappier feel than it did when it was only soaked for 15, 20 minutes. So I'm curious as to why this is marketed as a splash and go when it actually does perform, in my opinion, maybe even better, perma-soaked.
Okay, so two passes, that's really all I needed. And I've got a very healthy, uh, very minor, but healthy burr. Definitely a good working burr right now. All right, so I'm gonna strip this burr off uh, without using any sort of wood. I'm just gonna run the knife. Some light strokes. So there's many ways to deburr, and if you don't want to use a deburring wood or felt, you know, block, you can just, what you want to do is do a couple, a couple of passes on each side, just very, very light pressure. Okay, once the burr has been gone, you want to come back to this side. And I'm using extremely light pressure. One more time. Okay. So now, after that, now there is virtually no burr that I can feel on the side of the knife at this point, which is good news. Okay. So now, after you've achieved that, you've uh, really you've just stood the burr on the apex of the knife. And so what I do now is do some stropping. Just do, what I do is uh, 10 strokes on each side. Okay, you can go down this way on the back side, or you can come across this way. Whichever you're more comfortable with. I find that for me, doing an approach from tip to, front tip to bottom tip is best but for those who are new, you may want to go from here and pull this way. It just depends on how comfortable you are with your handling ability. And, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with going from bottom tip to top tip. Okay. It's really just whichever you're most comfortable using. Okay. So now on my second side, once I have done that 10 sides, uh, 10 strokes each side, I go to an eight stroke strop. Now I go to a six stroke strut. Now what I'm doing is I'm bringing all of the micro burrs that is uh, really hard to feel and uh, what you're doing is you're bringing all of it to the apex of the blade. Okay, you're standing, instead of having the burr stand to one side or another, you're really just bringing it this way so that it's standing on the very edge of the knife. And it makes your knife a lot sharper. So I'm reducing two strokes per strop whenever I flip the knife. So I'm now down to four strops or four strokes. Okay. Now I'm down to two. And I'm using extremely light pressure at this point. The weight of my hand is doing some work, but really that's all I'm letting the knife do is I'm just using the knife's weight and I'm not putting any pressure down onto the blade itself. Now, after that I've done two strokes, now I'll do one stroke. I'll do that a few times. And after about four strokes or so, I'll do another four or five strokes on each side, but very, very light pressure. Again, I'm only allowing the weight of the knife to do the work. My fingers are really simply guiding the knife. Okay. So the edge is now done. It is quite sharp. All right, so I'm gonna clean off this knife. Let's dry it off. And let's find out how sharp it is. So this is a 
just a single sharpening stone, the 1000 Rashiyama. And I'm curious to see how sharp this knife can get with just a single stone. I know that a lot of people have uh, asked me to do some cut tests. Uh, I've stopped doing cut tests because uh, people uh, really, you know that these stones are sharp. They can produce a very sharp edge. And so I didn't want to just oh, make, make it like a big show about uh, how well the paper cuts newspaper. But here is some parchment paper. And uh, let's see, this is just stropping and sharpening on this stone. Okay, so it's fairly sharp. It's from tip to tip here. Now, as you guys know, parchment paper is very, very thin, very weak, and extremely hard to cut. It'll reveal uh, every imperfection in your in your blade. So this knife isn't perfect. This, you know the edge isn't perfect. Uh, this is a 1,000 grit stone, but as you can see. It is fairly sharp. Okay, so again, it's very, very weak paper, and um, it actually is soaking up some water. You can see that uh, even though this is a, well, this has been perma soaked, but it is dry on the surface, but you can still see the stone is. Uh, allowing the paper to absorb water and I see it's actually crinkling up here and this paper is so thin that any moisture that you get on it will actually create the uh, situation where it's absorbing water as you can see right here so even though this is a you know kind of a dry stone at this point but you can still see the paper is absorbing a lot of water and even with my hands being slightly moist and so making it uh, a little bit more difficult to cut. But you can see this is a very sharp knife. And uh, this stone here is just a wonderful, uh, wonderful stone. I don't talk too much about it. Um, it kind of have gone under the radar because of all the other stones that I've been testing, but it's a really good stone. And as you can, as, as you can see, it produces a wonderful edge with just a single stone without any sort of polishing. And uh, I'm not going to polish this knife. I think it's just a knife that more of a is a utility knife for myself, and uh, so I'm not going to worry about polishing it. Um, I think it's just fine the way it is. So, anyways, thank you guys for watching. Hopefully, this was a good video for you. Uh, hopefully, it was helpful to some degree. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. And I will catch you guys in the next video.